Your canoe may well be made of the same material they use to make bulletproof vests. That's right. Many canoes today are made of woven aramid fibers, better known by the trade name Kevlar. For canoes, though, they use a lesser density, since presumably no one will be shooting at you. A Kevlar canoe weighs about half as much as a wooden or aluminum canoe, and it's virtually maintenance-free. They build these canoes from several layers of Kevlar fabric, glued together to create a solid laminate material. It all begins with a fiberglass mold of the canoe's hull. The first step is to spread resin over its interior. Once that's done, they spread a sheet of Kevlar over the resin and rub it against the mold to push out any air bubbles. Then they trim off the excess fabric. Using a squeegee, they force out any excess resin and stretch the fabric until it's taut. This step ensures the laminate will turn out strong and smooth. They repeat this entire process with a second layer of Kevlar. Then run a roller over everything to expel any excess resin and press the layers tightly together. Now for some structural components. Pieces of thin, high-density foam go along the bottom of the hull. Glue bonds them to each other and to the bottom of the hull. Using a machine called a hot box, they begin heating strips of foam to curve them. These curved pieces are called ribs. They reinforce the sides, adhering with resin. With the structural core of the canoe complete, they now encase it in a third layer of Kevlar. Once that's down, they prepare to bond everything together with vacuum pressure. They lay down a sheet of white fabric impregnated with a non-stick coating to prevent the vacuum bag from sticking to the surface. This mesh, called scrim, goes on next. It helps stimulate airflow during that vacuum process. Now they tape a plastic vacuum bag around the mold sealing everything inside. Then they connect one end of a hose to the bag and the other end to a vacuum machine. The vacuum steadily draws out the air from within the bag, pulling the layers of Kevlar tightly together. After eight to 10 hours under vacuum, the bag comes off. If a canoe flips over, flotation tanks in the corners keep it afloat. Workers build each tank out of two pieces of low-density foam. After sanding them to the right shape, they lay a sheet of fiberglass mat over them and coat it with resin. This strengthens the foam and seals the two pieces into one unit. After the resin cures for an hour, they extract the canoe from the mold. The factory's quality control inspector checks it over and, if everything's okay, applies a protective coat of resin. Once that's dry, they cap the edges with aluminum strips called gunnels, which keep the hull from folding inward. Then, an aluminum cross beam and a nylon end cap on each end. A wooden yoke for carrying the canoe upside down on land and a wooden seat with nylon webbing. Workers rivet all these components to the gunnels, then rivet the gunnels securely to the Kevlar laminate. This factory puts every canoe it produces on a digital scale to ensure it meets weight specifications. If all is well, the finishing touch is a decal displaying the manufacturer's name. Kevlar canoes, like those made of other materials, vary in size, shape, and design. A canoe intended for fishing or hunting, for example, is quite different than one designed for long expeditions, or for a two-person racing team, or for a solo canoeist. <laughs>